Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody. Uh, happy Monday. I'm excited to be back streaming. It's been, you know, I was looking at my Twitch stream uh, and it told me the last time that I've been streaming and I think it was something like 23 days ago. It's almost been a month. Uh, and of course, those were some NCAA competitions that I was streaming last and had a great time with them. Uh, the last couple weeks, I've been judging a couple junior meets. Just got back to... Uh, or from Winter Cup, which was really exciting. It was great to see everybody there. If anybody is watching the stream from Winter Cup, um, it was awesome to see you guys out there. Uh, I had a really great time. I think the event went really well. Uh, this stream is the Pommel Horse. This, I mean, this has been requested from so many different people. This is really a Pommel Horse D-score uh, focused stream. So everything you need to know from identifying skills on Pommel Horse to um, you know some of the some of the basic or some of the the more popular skills that you might see people competing uh, and stuff like that, and we'll be talking pretty much pretty much everything you need to know for for Pommel Horse D Score. So for those of you watching on the YouTube, I'll probably be talking for a few minutes here about some stream updates. Uh, I'll put a timestamp in the description of when the the actual Pommel Horse content starts. So, like I said, guys, I was just at Winter Cup uh, as an auxiliary judge doing the vault line judge so every time they step out of bounds raise my little flag and uh, tell the the judges what the deductions are it was a really good experience um, really enjoyed doing it and uh, like I said great to see everybody great to see some awesome gymnastics pommel horse included and I will be having a stream on Wednesday kind of recapping the day one winter cup which is the senior men's all-around competition um, Unfortunately, it, you know, you may have seen on Twitter that USAG is not releasing any of the videos from day two or day three. Day two being the Elite Team Cup, uh, first day in team competition, and day two being the second day for the senior men and the individual event finals for the juniors. So that's unfortunate. It is behind the Flow Gymnastics paywall. There's quite a bit of controversy about that. You know, personally, I really just find it extremely disappointing for men's gymnastics considering the fact that we're such a struggling sport and really we need everything that we every, you know everything that we can to uh, be able to expand the sport and to produce new content and that's that's kind of just holding holding us back um, you know not being able to access the routines on YouTube and whatnot so I still would like to use the the day one videos because they're they're up on YouTube on the USA gymnastics channel and so I think I'm just going to kind of do like an hour, hour and a half uh, recap of some of the, the best routines from the night, some of just the most impactful routines from the night, you know, maybe routines that we expected to do a little better uh, than they ended up doing. And we can talk a little bit about the results of day two as well, but we'll be focusing on the actual gymnastics from day one since we have those videos. <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, we have a couple uh, NCAA competitions this weekend. So feel, you know, feel free to, to tune into those. I think those are going to be interesting. And the one on Sunday, Cal versus Stanford, I've heard is actually an in-person meet, but they're testing using Verdius um, with the in-person meet. So I think that's really cool because I know the virtual experience for the audience has been uh, quite positive. So if we can bring that to some in-person meets, that would be pretty cool. So, all right. Let's go ahead and just get started here because I know you guys are, aren't here to hear me blabber. You're here to me. You're here to learn a little bit about Pommel Horse um, as an event. And so let's, I'll just go ahead and share my screen here. Now, I'm going to jump kind of right into this right off the bat. I don't have, you know, some, some lesson plan built out or uh, too much of an idea where I'm, where I'm going to go with this, but I think I'm just going to go through. Uh, some of the, the core concepts. We're going to go through some of the element groups, really understand uh, how you identify various skills in the routine, because I know for a lot of people watching Pommel Horse or trying to judge Pommel Horse, um, it ends up being, it ends up looking like almost like one really long skill or several really long skills, and you don't really know where one skill ends and the others begin. So we're going to, we're going to help. The objective is I really would like to be able to help you guys understand when skills are beginning and ending, uh, what those skills are, what their values are, what element groups they belong to, 
and how to kind of, you know, if you were to break down a routine and, and find the, the values and element groups in the code of points, how, how to build up the, the start value from there. Now, I will say the pre prerequisite I, or so for this video is the other video that I did on general gymnastics scoring. It's not an all comprehensive video for building out scores, but uh, it gives you a good idea of how element groups work, how skill values work, and you know how you get to uh, a D score. And there's a couple examples that I do at the end of that video that might help um, you know if you're a little behind. So if you already know that stuff, great. We're just gonna hop in here for Palm Horse. And the reason that I'm doing Palm Horse first is because, like I said earlier, I've received several uh, kind of requests for this, uh, even from from judges who I know, you know, several judges that pommel horse is uh, an event that they're a little bit afraid of. It's it tends to be a little bit intimidating and it happens very quickly. So if you get behind or you're you're missing skills, you know, as a judge, it's hard to it's hard to keep up. All right, so I think let's just read a little bit of the first um, bits of the code of points for for the pommel horse event because I think it gives a good. Um, I think it gives a good sort of uh, general characteristic of the event. So a contemporary palm, and I'm just reading right here from article 11, that one. And, and I promise, by the way, that I won't just be reading the co code of points the whole time. I just want to emphasize some of these top parts here. Contemporary pommel horse exercise is characterized by a variety of support positions on all parts of the horse, permitting different types of circular swings with legs apart and together, single leg swings and or scissors, and swings through the handstand position with or without turns. All elements must be executed with swing and without the slightest interruption of the exercise. Strength and hold elements are not permitted. So I know this is often an overlooked paragraph of the code of points because it seems to be kind of obvious and straightforward if you're familiar with the sport, but it really well characterizes pommel horse as an event. Like it says, there's three main types of skills that you see on the event and that you can compete on it. You've got um, circling skills, which are the majority of the skills that you're going to see uh, based off of that basic circle position that I'm going to assume most of you guys are familiar with. You have leg cut and scissoring skills, um, you know, where you're swinging your legs and, and cutting across the horse and adding twists and travels to uh, increase the difficulty or scissors to handstand. And then we have handstand elements, which I guess the scissors to handstands uh, also kind of are a part of, but there's also swing to handstand elements, you know, buznaris and and uh, other unnamed elements that are similar in structure, uh, as well as dismounts, which t tend to be either a handstand style dismount or a circle dismount in the in the form of a Russian or a flank off. So, um, you know, those are the three main types of skills that you're going to see, and we're going to dissect those a little bit more when we go into the element groups. And I think it's important to note this one second that says, all elements must be executed with swing and without the slightest interruption of the exercise. So everything on pommel horse should be fluid and flow. Other, you know, other events like, like rings, you have a lot of holding uh, strength positions. In fact, pretty much every other event except for vault um, and I guess high bar, uh, you, you have these holds. P bars, you might have an L hold. Rings, you have strength hold positions. Uh, uh, floor, you might have handstand holds or or other strength as well. Pommel horse, you do not want to really be holding anything. It should constantly flow and swing. So yeah, now that that's out of the way, I think the next step here is actually before we go into the element groups, I just want to look at some sample routines and I want to talk about how to identify when skills are starting and ending. Because if you can't understand when the start and the end of a skill is, you're not going to be able to, to break that up and identify the individual skills. So I'm going to go over to Trusty YouTube here, and uh, we're going to try to find some, some pommel horse. I'm just going to look up NCAA pommel horse routines. Um, tend to be a little bit more straightforward, maybe. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's me here. I'm going to actually not choose me. That routine is a little bit complicated. Um, let's see. Let's look up. I know, I don't know why, I know Michael Fletcher has a nice, let's, let's go ahead and try this one. And we're going to kind of pause it a little bit here. And I think, um, 
you know the core the core thing that I really want to to explain here is um, the concept of a front support. Now, a front support on pommel horse is when both of your hands are in front of your body on um, the horse somewhere. They can be on the leather, it can be on the handles, uh, and kind of by default, all circling skills begin and end in front support. There are a couple of exceptions, but for the most part, this is true. So by identifying where front supports happen in the routine, you have a pretty good way of determining where skills are broken up. Um, scissors, you know, it's a little bit different. They're, they're a bit of a different type of element um, in the handstands as well. But since the majority of skills that we're looking at are, sciz are circling skills, the concept of front support is really important. So let's just go here skill by skill, kind of like what I did at the beginning of my other um, video. And let's just identify some of these skills. So we start off here um, with a scissor traveling down to the end. I'll get, I'll, you know, I'll spend some time talking about scissors in a little bit. I'm a little more focused on the circling skills here. And he cuts into circles. So I'm going to kind of go frame by frame, actually back to the beginning of the circling skill. Yeah, okay, so he's coming out of his scissor here. And you can see right here in the beginning um, of, of the circle, he has both hands on the horse in front of his body. That is a front support. So he is beginning his circle from some front support right here. Now, as he goes around, he now reaches this position where both of his hands are behind his body on the horse uh, with his body in front of him. This is called a rear support. And typically, skills do not begin in rear support. There are exceptions, uh, I think, but they're very few. Uh, and the, major the strong majority of skills start and end in front support. So when we think about when he's going to get credit for this circle, we need to make sure that he um, returns to front support, right? And really the rule is you need to finish the circle or the, finish the element back to front support and you actually need to, to begin engaging another element um, to get credit for the last one. So let's just look here. So now he's back in front support. You can see he's starting to turn his shoulders here and he's got a little bit of a quarter turn going on, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, that's, that's one thing in, in pommel horse. Uh, you can do a circle or a circle quarter turn and they're essentially identical, whether that's a quarter turn into the circle or a quarter turn out of it. So at this point, he has his, he's back in front support. He has completed that circle. And as long as he starts the next skill, essentially meaning you know, right there, he's starting the next skill. He now gets credit for that A circle. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the values of skills um, and, you know, what kind of circles are the, you know, what's a circle versus a loop and things like that in a second. But I just want to kind of convey this concept of the front support and how it breaks up skills. So the, this front support is the end of that circle on the, on, the, on the end of the pommel, but it's also the beginning of the next element. So let's watch, let's, let's not pay too much attention about what skills he's doing, but let's look at when the skills are beginning and ending. So he's coming up onto the pommel now. He's, this time he's in rear support. And we're just going to keep watching for that front support. And there it is. So he's actually done a pommel on the loop, or on the, sorry, uh, a loop on the pommel, rather. And we know this because he's, he began and ended in front support, right? Now we can see if we just keep watching this, this actually ends up being a flop sequence, which is <laughs> pretty complex. And we're going to talk about that in detail uh, in a little bit. But the point is here, we can just keep pausing this on every front support and identify what he just did. So he's done another loop this time, once again, with a quarter turn. So in total on this flop sequence, he's done a po single pommel loop. And he's done a single pommel loop with a quarter turn. Once again, we'll be talking about flops more in a second. But let's focus on, on the front support. So rear support, now he's really turning here. Front support again, boom. Stop the video, identify the skill. In this case, a Stockley. We will discuss what a Stockley is, but the concept is let's watch for front supports. And another front support. That's the end of the flop, right? So... So if we, you know, if we keep going through here, oh, 
kind of went pretty fast, but every time he's in front support, boom, front support, beginning of a new skill. As a judge, when I'm watching these routines and you know in live time and it's going by fast, I'm looking for these front supports and I'm mentally taking note. Okay, that skill's done. What skill was it? Write it down. Now we're starting a new skill. So this is a this is a tongue fei, which is a traveling skill. And you can see boom, front support, right? Um, he's 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 coming along here. And once again, he needs to kind of fully finish the skill. And where's that hand? There's the front support, right? Uh, and it, it gets a little complicated sometimes when they're when they're turning and they're not completely lined up uh, the way that they're that they're supposed to be, and whatnot. But this is at its at its, Pommel Horse's core the foundation of breaking up skills and identifying individual skills. So now it looks like he's maybe going to go into um, a back a back broth or some kind of travel. There we go, and boom, both hands in front of his body, front support. The skill is completed and he's beginning the next skill, which is a loop. So, you know, we could keep doing this and keep identifying uh, when skills are, are completed and ended. Of course, some skills, like say a Magyar, where you're traveling um, forward across this, the, the horse, and we'll talk about this more in a second, uh, it has multiple circles, right? So you're hitting multiple front supports. Now, of course, you need to finish the criteria of the skill, in that case, traveling across the, the horse, um, before reaching that final front support. So if you reach a front support in the middle of the horse, yeah, of course it's not a Magyar, right? You haven't traveled all the way across. But the point is, once you finish the criteria of the skill, you do need to hit that front support um, in order to get credit for it. So one thing that you see quite often is a guy, like right now, doing a Magyar, right? Oh, skip too, skip too far forward. Doing a Magyar, and let's say he falls right here. And comes off. Well, notice his hands are in rear support. So because he has not yet reached the position with both of his hands in front of him on that far side of the leather uh, in front support, he has not completed the skill. So if he falls right now, he would not get credit for that skill. So this is a very important concept to understand. Now, of course, he does complete it by going to, by going to front support right here. Uh, so that's great. And if he was to fall now, because he's engaging, you know, he's, he's entering the next skill, then he would get credit for that Magyar. So I know this is, uh, yeah, this is a bit tricky of a topic uh, in general, the, the front support concept. But what I encourage you to do is if you struggle s seeing these front supports in real time, do what I'm doing right now. Walk through the videos, uh, you know, in slow motion or very, you know, frame by frame. You can use the the, the comma and period buttons on YouTube to, to, to move frame by frame. They're also the less than and greater than uh, symbols. And it'll go frame by frame, and you can watch the routines and say, that's a front support. That's the beginning and end of the skill. So I think that's just a really important quick topic to cover before we actually dive into the basics of, of uh, Pommel Horse here. Uh, we've got a question. This might be jumping ahead a bit, but how do you determine if someone gets credit on a dismount or not when they fall? It is jumping ahead a bit. Uh, I will cover that. I will cover that when we get to the dismounts because there is uh, there is quite. I mean, it's it, it does get difficult sometimes with that, uh, and I think it's easiest if we just uh, if I just talk about that during the dismounts. I kind of just wanted to talk about the the front support there concept for circling for circling skills. So. What I want to hit next is what the element groups are in Pommel Horse. If you've seen my other basics, you know, gymnastics scoring basics video, I talked about how there's four different element groups for each event, and one of them tends to be the dismount. So on Pommel Horse, it's no different, and we have our four right here. So element group one is the single leg swings and scissors, so scissoring elements. Uh, group two is circle and flares, as it's defined, circle and flares with and or without spindles and handstands, care swings, rush and wendy swings, flops, and combined elements. It's a little bit of a wordy definition, but essentially any circling skill that you're doing without traveling across the horse falls into group two. And I'll go into those shortly. Group three is travel type elements. So 
and, and by, by definition, travel type elements including crolls, tongfei, wu, rough, and traveling spindles. This is exactly the opposite. Any circling skill that really travels is pretty much in group three, and then group four, dismounts. So, let's see. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. And I think first I'm going to just go through a lot of the skills and their values and ways to think about uh, how their values work. Because obviously there's so many different uh, skills on Pama Horse and, you know, just like any event, it, it's difficult to memorize them all. But there's little tricks that you can use where you only need to memorize one or two, skill, one or two skills in a category um, and you can kind of remember uh, the values of many other skills based off of those uh, you know, core, core, core parts. So let's jump down to where the skills are, and you'll notice there's quite a bit of text here uh, just specifying very detailed rules. You can feel free to look at those yourselves. So I'm going to try to hit the, the main ones. And uh, I know this is kind of a D, uh, D score focused video, but there's also this great table here of the E jury which is the deductions that you can take on Palm Horse. And I might talk about those a little bit at the end, depending on our time. So the first element group, scissors, at its core is this basic uh, scissor element. And I'll try to move this uh, over here. Just the scissor forward, which is an A. And this is very basically, you know, cutting your legs forward and, and, and cutting, you know, with the other leg, the other leg forward. It's a little hard to show without a uh, demonstration, but we'll see some examples shortly and everything kind of builds off of this right and this way you know you really don't have to memorize too much because you'll you'll start to to understand how it builds off in terms of value so then we have the scissor forward with the half twist which you don't see too commonly because it's also an a value uh, it's really just turning your body but your legs are doing the exact same thing you're not adding anything different with with your leg motion over the standard scissor. Now, you'll notice here what tends to happen is there's different ways you can upgrade the skill, right? Part of it is adding turns and part of it is adding travels. So the half turn doesn't upgrade the skill, but if you do a scissor uh, with a hop to the side, so say you start on both pommels and you hop down to the side with or without that half turn, that upgrades it to a B. So if you do the scissor on both pommels and you hop over down to the side, now it's a B. And you know you can kind of build off that because now that's moving from the, the pommels down or from the, the side up onto the pommels. But let's take that one step further. And if you hop from one side to the other, now it's a C, right? So there's other ways that we can add to this though, if I can find it. Uh, where is it? Looking for my scissor full here. <laughs> uh, I think this is it. Yes. So double scissor forward. Uh, it the way it's written here is is a little confusing. Quarter turn forward, quarter turn back. I call it a scissor full. Essentially, you're you're doing a very similar motion to that scissor half but you add a bit of turn with your legs as well, and it comes down. And I know these are pretty hard to explain in person. Or, uh, you know, With words, you kind of have to see them a couple of times to be able to recognize them. Uh, but essentially, this scissor full upgrades a whole value letter over the original scissor. So now this is a B, and same thing with the travels as this comes up, right? So if you now travel down to the side, doing the scissor full action, you now have upgraded it to a C, and if you do it across the horse, it, you now upgrade it to a D. And this C scissor and the D scissor, the Mikulik, uh, are two scissors that you see very, very commonly at, well, pretty, pretty much all like upper levels of gymnastics. So those, are, so those are some pretty core elements to have. Another thing that I'll just note is that on the basic scissor position, you can also do a reverse scissor. So the, the, the standard scissor, you cut your leg forward, um, like your upper leg forward into the, you know, into the front. There's also a reverse scissor down here, scissor backward, where 
it's kind of the opposite. You start, you know, with your leg in front and then you like, you kind of cut it backwards. This one you don't really see too common. I, commonly, I wouldn't wor worry too much about it. The other main kinds of scissors that we see are scissor handstands, this one right here. And they tend to be D value. There, there are some other versions that aren't D value, but they tend to just not be worth it. Um, and so they says it's just a scissor up to handstand on one pommel and come back down. So I think I won't talk too much about scissors because I, they tend to be a little bit easier to understand than, uh, than, than some of the other elements here. So I'm just going to continue going down into our next element group, uh, which is element group two. Let me just make sure I'm not missing any Thing important and you'll notice there's quite a few other skills here but a lot of these skills are just skills that you don't really see you know we you do see the reverse scissor hand which is just kind of cutting with the other leg forward into the handstand sometimes you see both the forward scissor hand and the reverse scissor hand done in a single routine if they really like scissor hands um, that is a different skill here it is swing backwards uh, into scissor handstand and it's also a d value but some of these you just never see i mean this one the brian I, i've never even really heard of this Maybe, maybe I have, but you know, you pretty much instantly forget it because you're, you're doing some handstand, then you're doing this turn, and then you're coming down. It's like, why do that, right? Um, so a lot of this you just don't really see. Okay, so let's move on to element group two. Element group two, once again, is circles that are essentially stay, staying in the same place. They're not really traveling. And at the very core is uh, the circle itself, right? And we saw some of these examples here. It's important to know that this circle can be done on two two pommels. Uh, it can also be done on the side, like a like a you know one hand on the pommel, one hand on the leather. Uh, it's all the same. It's essentially you know as long as you're in that cross plane of the horse doing the circle, it's the same box, right? And uh, another general concept on most of pommel horse is that unless otherwise specified, flares are the same value as circles. So you, you can pretty much do, other than maybe Russians, you can do pretty much any skill flared and it'll get the same value as, as the, the regular circle counterpart. So flares a lot of times look impressive and a lot of times it's not an upgrade. Now there are specific skills where flares do upgrade it and we'll take a look at some of those. Uh, so building off of the circle, we have you know circles in other positions that maybe upgrade it. So a circle in side support on one pommel is a B. You don't really see the skill done. It's not worth uh, you know it's 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 actually a little bit difficult for a B. Uh, circle with hands outside the pommels. Ellis Manon used to compete this in the NCAA. Uh, <laughs> you need some long arms I think to do that. Um, and coming down here, we start to get to our loops. So a loop is basically just a circle in cross support, which is long ways on the horse, right? You're, you're now facing kind of sideways here. And it's typically, yeah, it's, it's, it's done on the leather. You also have what we call back loops, which are the same thing, except you're on the other end of the horse. Um, here we have a circle on the single pommel in cross support, so in the long ways of the horse, that's a B value. And circles in, in between the pommels in cross support is also a B value. Let's see here. Um, I'm, you know, try not to bore you with things that you can kind of see on your own. I'm just trying to point out the, the main components here that you, that you tend to see quite frequently so that you know um, what element group they're in and what their values are. I think it's worth talking about some of the sort of sort of build up skills here. So things like spindles, this is where you're turning your body in a counter direction to the to the you know the uh, the direction of your circle. Uh, once again another concept that's a bit hard to explain, but once you see it in a couple of videos, it's pretty easy to identify. Generally a half spindle um, in most locations is a B value and a full spindle on the end in cross or side support is a D value. You tend to see that skill quite a lot. Um, and here it is right here. It's also called a Magyar. Let's see. You start to, you start to see 
some of these flare spindles become pretty popular. Paul Judah and uh, a couple other guys. I think Ewell does some of these too. Uh, if you're doing a flare full spindle over the one pommel, it's just a D. You see them do that. But then you see this uh, icorn, which is the flared spindle that kind of travels over to the other pommel and immediately travels back uh, you know, on the completion of the spindle. And that's an E. It's a pretty difficult skill. I've, I've tried it a few times and uh, it takes a lot of energy for an E. Now things like this, this F value, uh, what is this? This is a full spindle with both pommels between your hands. Yeah, so full spindle with, with your hands on the outside of the pommels. I mean, things like this are quite difficult. And you just tend not to see them too commonly at the uh, the upper level. I can't remember if Ellis Manon had that one in his routine or not. It's a bit difficult. So I won't talk too much about those. Um, let's see. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, a lot of these skills here really aren't necessarily things that you see super commonly. So I'm not gonna not gonna waste your time going over them. You can always jump into the code of points and uh, look for specific things yourself. So now we're getting to a, cu a couple other really important building blocks on pommel horse that kind of take the circle to the next level, and you can build up other skills using some of these elements. Specifically, these are things like Stockley's and Cares, which do start to get a little confusing. Um, and I, I will need to show some examples of these in a second. So starting with the direct Stockley A, note that it's called Stockley A, but it is B value on its own. And if we can see this little guy in the box here, essentially it's starting in front support, like always, turning in the direction of your circle with the pommel behind you, and then continuing that half turn um, fully back to the two pommels in front support, right? And you can do this in different locations, like it's saying over the pommel, on the pommels, you know, on the leather, whatever. It's the basic motion that makes this a stocklier. So you can think of it as turning, you know, onto your, your first support hand with your, your hands behind you, and then doing another quarter turn out back to front support. This is a really important concept to understand. Then we have stockley B, which is probably even more important than Stockley A because we see it in things like flop sequences quite commonly. It's very similar to Stockley A, but let's let's look at the let's look at the the animation here. So starting on, uh, you know, you always start on your your front support here. You turn to that rear support on one pommel, just like a Stockley A. Now the difference is that when we do our quarter turn, we're not doing a quarter turn out back to two pommels like the Stockley A. Remember, this one comes back to both pommels. We're doing the quarter turn and we're finishing on front support um, on the one pommel, but it's not always the case that you end on the one pommel, right? Because some, you can actually do the skill from the side. Uh, we'll take a look at some example routines, but a, a skill on the side where you quarter turn up onto the pommel and then you quarter turn you know, still onto the pommel, um, 180 degrees turned, and that's your Stockley B. We will, we will, we will look at this a little bit uh, in some examples. And this is a core foundation of a flop, uh, of a flop. In addition to the single pommel loop. What's over here? Um, so I'm going to come back to this skill in a second, which are handstand skills. We've got a question: What are some skills that you don't see in Fig competitions but are common in the NCAA? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, I'm trying to think. On pommel horse, I'm not, I'm actually not 100% sure off the top of my head. Um, I don't think there's any super obvious ones that come to mind, partially because in the NCAA, there's not a lot of changes in the rules that incentivize certain skills um, on pommel horse. Because in general, you know, the main change is, is things like on the dismount, where you get partial credit for um, for for say C dismounts versus D, you know in Fig you need a D value dismount for your full element group. So on other events, you know, and the other thing is that in NCAA you have stick bonus, right? So in other events you might see people opt for easier dismounts, like on floor you might see double full dismounts that you don't really see in Fig because in Fig you really need that D dismount. In NCAA you might be able to you know 
it might actually be better for you to do a C dismount that you know you can land well because you still get partial element group credit and you might be able to get that stick bonus. So on pommel horse it's a little different because there's not really you know too many good reasons to there's no stick bonus so there's not really good reasons to to downgrade your dismount and there's not really other incentives that make it uh, nice to do um, to do these other skills. Uh, Dan Rivera says maybe a Kroll or Backroth. These are skills that you you do tend to see more maybe more in the NCAA than than Fig, um, just because they they're a little bit easier. Where at Fig competitions, because you're seeing the top level guys, they're they're typically trying to t to shove higher value skills in there. Where you know a, a Kroll is like a C value, uh, which we'll see. So they don't really want that in their routine, but none that are super obvious, in my mind. So, continuing down here, we have some other, let's see. Okay, so this is another foundational building block for Pommel Horse, which is the Care. So, the Care is another 180 degree turn, just like the Stockley A and Stockley B, but it's done a little bit differently. So, if I zoom in over here, I know the chat might be covering a little bit. Um, we are, once again, turning towards that one Pommel. But this one does the entire 180 degrees on one arm, where the Stockley A and the Stockley B, it's a quarter, quarter, each quarter done on a different arm. The care goes 180 degrees all the way around. And we'll see that build into some other travels and skills uh, later on. Now let's see. Uh, so another skill up here that I kind of avoided for a second is this direct stock lie straddle through handstand. So essentially you come into a direct stock lie and you go up to handstand and you come back down uh, to, to straddle, like a, like a scissor position. And this kind of opens the door here for a whole category of skills, which is our handstand skills that aren't dismounts. So essentially what you can do, and, and this is another one that you can build up, right? There's two ways to really to get up to the handstand, and there's really two ways to come down. And each of them are kind of a different value. So you can do a direct stock lie up to your handstand, or you can do just a circle up to your handstand. And a lot of times you see the guys do that, do the circle up to the handstand on as a side, you know, like a side loop sort of thing. And the direct stock lie up to handstand is always going to be a le one letter value higher than the circle up to handstand. Okay? Similarly, on the way down, you can do um, you can come down into the scissor position just like this skill, or you can come down into circles or flares more commonly. And if you come down into circle circles or flares, that is a letter value higher than coming down to um, a scissor position or a straddle. And so the combination of those things and adding tra like travels and pirouettes in your handstand upgrade this skill sequentially, which we will see in a second when we find more of these. I'm going to come back to these skills in a second. I'm going to try to find the handstands while we're on them. I'm not sure why there was one handstand and then, huh, where is it? Okay, so I think, um, yeah, I think they may not even uh, actually list them in the code in separate boxes because it might be defined in the text. But essentially, like, so let's take an example here. So this is like the kind of the, the base, the baseline where you're doing a stock lie up. You're not traveling. You're just immediately coming down to uh, to your straddle legs or circle. So if you were to then uh, do this, adding a pirouette across and coming down to your to your your uh, your straddle position, that'll upgrade at one. So that'll be a D. And you can kind of keep doing this until you come up here which to Buznari, which is the highest value handstand element that you can do. So this is uh, similarly reverse Stockley, direct Stockley A, or pommel circles to handstand. Uh, a tr you know, a, a travel there and back. So you got to go there and back, and then you come back down to flares. And this is an F. So there are different variations that you can do between the first one we looked at and this one um, in the different combinations that I talked about and they kind of have different values. So this one is a little bit tricky but just the key elements are 
did they go up through from us just from a circle or from a uh, or or from a direct Sacquier or did they uh, and then how many pirouettes are they doing and then are they coming down to a uh, a scissor position or a circle or flare and we'll probably see some examples of that as well okay so moving along I am mindful of the fact that this is taking a little while so we'll try to go a little faster now here's a couple really common skills that we're seeing now um, or they used to be less common and now they're they're becoming more and more popular which is the sewn and the bazugo which I'm assuming is is further down so the sewn is a full care you essentially come uh, you know from your from your front support here you typically have to bend your hand a little backwards onto the pommel and you're gonna do a full 360 re uh, degree turn back to the the pommels pretty much everybody's doing this now in the NCAA uh, Alec Yoder Steven Edorosik uh, you know tons of other guys as well and and uh, and it's 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 an E value so it's a high value skill it's only one circle so it's relatively you know lower energy and um, but it's a little more risky because it's difficult to get that hand hand position and I got a comment saying some video clips might be helpful in explaining these more complicated skills the code can be hard to read from the drawings yeah it can I I, I don't have like specific videos queued up for all of these skills so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just um, I'm going to run through some example videos afterwards and try to and identify some of those skills. And that way we'll see some of those same common skills happening um, that I'm kind of talking, talking over here. So the other, here it is, Bazugo. This is the other one. This is a reverse Stockley with 360 degrees. The difference with this is you're essentially using your other hand in your, um, in your circle. So uh, your rear hand coming around. This is another one that it gets a little easier to visualize when you see them do that, do it back to back care bazugo. All right. What else do we have? Um, I guess we should talk about Russian skills. So Russians are skills where you are, uh, they're also called Wendy swings. They're skills where you kind of constantly keep your hands in front support and rotate around. Let's see if I can find like where the actual Russians are. So many skills on pommel horse and this is why it's so difficult uh, for people to watch because there's just quite a few so yeah something like this right here this this b value skill is kind of the core uh, element here and you'll notice he's constantly in front support right and you just go around in circles uh, and similar to other skills you can kind of build up the value from this initial b value russian which is a full russian on the leather so Doing less than that, half or three quarters, will get you an A. <clears throat> Double and triple are C and D, respectively. And you can do them in more difficult positions to upgrade this value, right? So without being in a flop sequence, the uh, Russians on a single pommel upgrade one-tenth. So now it's C, D, E, right, for a single, double, triple Russian. Although you don't normally see these on their own, you usually see them in flop sequences, which we will spend a few minutes talking about flops on their own. And uh, if you were to do Russians, let's see, we're into travels now. Um, if you were to do Russians like in the middle of the pommels, in between the two pommels, that also upgrades from B, C, D to C, D, E. So sometimes you see higher level guys doing triple Russian in the middle of the pommels. Uh, and I think those are pretty much the key locations that you can do it. Now, I just want to mention this one other skill here, uh, check care, often called a more. It's another basic 180 degree turn here, but you can see it's a little bit of the opposite where instead of using, in this case, with the counterclockwise circle, the left hand that we saw to initiate the Stockley A and Stockley B, he's, you know, you use this right hand here uh, and you come to the other pommel into front support and then you continue your second quarter on the other arm into this almost rear support finish. Now the skill does not complete until you reach front support, but from a technical, you know, from a, a performance perspective, 
it almost completes in that front support and then you're doing half a circle. But for identification purposes, it needs to reach that last front support and that's why they drew it here in the code. Okay, so that's the majority of element groups too, other than flops. So I guess we should just talk about flops now. Um, flops are sequences of individual elements performed on one pommel, okay? There's two kinds of flops that you can really do. So the core, the core uh, building blocks of flops are the single pommel loop, which we saw Michael Fletcher doing in this video, and I can look back at that in a second, uh, and Stockley's. So I think there's a lot of confusion about what a single, what, what the difference is between a single pommel loop and a Stockley. So actually what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna look at his routine, I'm gonna look at one of mine that I know, oh, I keep pushing buttons, that I know um, I have some, some, good, some good examples for the, uh, for the, flops and we're going to walk through them because there's two types that you can do the first of them uh, includes or includes russian elements in them and the other type includes just single pommel loops and stockleys and so i have an example of both here i really wish i had like you know in the judges course we have a uh, a, a video with like all sorts of different flops or series of videos and i wish i had that so ignore the poor scissor but okay uh, so, I, and then I do a check care here, which is that, oh, sorry. Then I do a check care, which is that B, B value element that I was just talking about. And then we're gonna, about to get into the flops here. Now, one other thing that I want to, uh, one other thing that I want to, to cover is that a single pommel loop, like I said with Michael Fletcher's routine in the beginning of the video, can include a quarter turn, whether that's a quarter turn into the loop or a quarter turn out of it. And the difference between a, a pommel loop and a stockley is that a pommel loop is either, you know, a, a loop on one pommel with no turn or a quarter turn, where a stockley is a is a single pommel loop with a quarter turn in and a quarter turn out. So let's look at what I mean by that. And I'm gonna go frame by frame here. So I'm about to start my flop sequence. I'm doing a quarter turn Well, I mean, here's, here's, here's the front support, right? So this is actually where the flop sequence is beginning, okay? Now let's watch for that next front support. Where is the next front support? We got a rear support. And boom, that's one single pommel loop with actually with, without any quarter turns, right? Because from front support to front support, it was just a straight loop on the pommel. Now... We're going to see another single pommel loop, but this time it has a quarter turn at the end. Still a single pommel loop, right? But I've but now when I look at this front when I look at this front support position with both of my hands in front of my body, I've added a quarter to the a quarter turn to the loop, and that's okay because the code of point says any circling element can include a quarter turn, and it's still that circling element. So now in this flop sequence, I've done loop, loop, okay? And this is a Russianing sequence. So let's remember the, the direction that I've started this Russian. It's a little bit ambiguous, but the, the correct you know, answer is that I'm starting it uh, sideways, you know, the, the perpendicular plane of the horse in this direction. And let's see how many Russians I do. So... You know, at this point, once my hand gets back down, oh, this is not a good one. But at this point, I've done half a Russian, right? Because now it's a little crooked, but now I'm essentially facing uh, more towards the camera and towards this right side of the screen. So that's half a Russian. And the skill actually finishes here, right? Because this is my front support. And then this would actually be initializing um, a circle on the side. So that flop sequence is done. I'll talk about the valuation of the, you know, the, the two kinds of flop sequences in just a second. But let's watch the other flop now. So this is another thing that you see sometimes is initiating the flop sequence from the side support on the horse. Oh, skip forward a little bit. 
mine. Okay, so here we go. So here is the initial uh, front support starting position. I'm doing a quarter turn up onto the pommel. Quite a few frames here. And then I am finishing the first pommel loop here. Now, it's a little confusing because I didn't start this pommel loop with both hands on the pommel. I had one hand on the pommel, one hand on the leather, but this is counted as a pommel loop. So then we're gonna come around um, and I, I'm doing that same thing, loop, quarter turn, right? So I did a quarter turn loop up to the pommel and then I did a loop quarter turn to the side. So now we can think of my body position being, you know, looking to the left. And then from here, now we're gonna now we're gonna see a stockley. A stockley B, like I said, is a quarter turn in and a quarter turn out. So let's see that quarter turn in. Yep, there's the quarter. I'm now in this position facing the long ways of the horse in this direction. And I'm going to continue all the way around, quarter turn out. So it's a 180 degree turn, now facing the right side of the screen. Now this is where uh, it's going to get difficult because a lot, most people that you see would continue to do another Stockley back into the middle of the horse. But I actually compete a Stockley A, which is not commonly seen on flop sequences. And it's a quarter turn in just like the Stockley B, but on the quarter turn out, instead of returning to the pommel, I, I do a quarter turn out onto the leather. And this aligns just like the basic st uh, direct Stockley A and direct Stockley B that we saw in the code of points, right? Way up here, you remember? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Did I go too far? I went too far. Where is it? Yeah, went too far. Should be right here, yep. So once again, that direct Stockley B, that first element that we saw, you know, just like he's finishing on the single pommel loop in that front support, uh, the direct Stockley A is very similar in motion. It, it goes on that one pommel in rear support, but then it kind of comes back out um, to, to both pommels or how I did it to the pommel and the leather. So honestly, flops are probably one of the most complex things in gymnastics to identify. So, I mean, they could be their own lecture and I could go into them in much more detail, but how they are valued is, is depending, dependent on the two types. So um, with the Russian kind, if you remember, I showed you that one pommel Russian uh, values down here, like right here. So a single, uh, Wait, wait, wait. Oh yeah, so so a sing like a full Russian on one pommel alone is a C, with the half being a B. And essentially, if you add either a loop or a Stockley before it, um, it upgrades it by one tenth, and you can do that twice. So you remember that I went loop loop one eighty. Uh, so the one eighty is a B value. And because I did two pommel loops ahead of it, it upgrades it two tenths to a D value. If I were to just do one pommel loop before doing that half Russian, it would, it would be a C value. And you can't do more than two loops. You can't do three loops into the Russian and, and try to get an E. So what you'll see is loop loop is typically, both people do both loops because it's not that difficult. And then uh, Russians of varying turn. So loop loop 180 very very common it's a d loop loop 360 also very very common it's an e what's not so common is doing more than that and we saw steven compete both i think a g flop and an e and an f flop um which is loop loop triple russian and trip and loop loop double russian respectively so we'll, we'll i think we'll take a look at his routine at the end of this video okay so i am mindful of the time here and we spent quite a bit of time on group two but we are making our way through it so group three is uh travels there's quite a few travels in here i'm just going to highlight the common ones that we see 
So I'd say the most fundamental ones start with Magyar and Savato, which I'm going to, to just skip to, which is a pretty basic travel in theory. It's in cross support, so in the long direction of the pommel, traveling forward um, all the way across the pommel. That's a Magyar. And traveling backwards across is a Savato, and they're both D value. Now, I get questions about how you how you, you know, the different ways that you can do this with your hands. There's a few different techniques that you can do with it. Some guys, you'll see them start on the leather, climb up to the first pommel, climb into the leather, climb up to the second pommel, climb down on the leather. That's a D Magyar. You see guys skip the pommels completely, leather, leather, leather. That's what I did, D Magyar. You see some guys step up onto the first pommel and over the second pommel, D Magyar. Pretty much the only thing that is a, that downgrades the Magyar is stepping up onto the pommel, moving onto the other pommel, and then stepping down onto the leather, which you can see right here um, is a C Magyar. Almost any other way is a D. Um, and I think that goes for Savato as well, although the C, so C value Savato you, you just tend not to see too often. Cool. So Magyar and Savato are one of the sort of exceptions where flares do upgrade the skill. Um, so they become an E, E value skill. Now some other skills that are very common. Let's see. I know I skipped through quite a few of these. Sometimes you see side travels, uh, and the typical side travel that you see is uh, C value. There are D value ones as well. Those involve kind of stepping over uh, both pommels or hopping over them or hopping across the pommels, I guess I should say. Not too common, so I won't go into those. The, um, let's see, traveling with spindles, not super common. I used to compete this Ninreus one, which was a fun skill, but uh, not too common. Um, okay, so McGilney and Belenke, also not the most common. They're, they're traveling with sort of cares and stockleys going across. Um, actually, if I continue showing, showing this routine, I'll show you. Uh, I do this. So this is a Roth. Oh, that's actually a Roth. We'll get to that in a second. This is a McGilney. And this is a Belenke here. Those are becoming more popular in the NCAA, but not quite as popular as the other travels. Um, a Tung Fei, very popular skill. We saw Michael Fletcher do it. It's a travel with... You know, across both pommels with the pommels in between your hands, and uh, and it's like a half Russian across. So, if I go back to that video, he does this skill. This is a very, very, very common skill in the NCAA. I can't remember which one we're watching. This one, it's pretty good. So, and then I guess while I'm at it, I'll just mention a Roth um, is a 360 Russianing travel with uh you know with hand placements in the middle where the tongue fei kind of goes around both pommels so let's see what he does here so loop loop stockley d value flop tongue fei oh that was a tongue fei yep oh, let me uh put this in slow motion so you can see starting here going across both pommels and uh, it actually ends up being a full 360 because you have to kind of complete the turn at the end. Although I think, yeah, there's, there's other ways to, there's a couple different ways to do it, uh, whether you're starting in side support or, or front support. Um, pretty much all of these travels that I just told you, McGilney, Belenke, Roth, and Tung Fei are D value travels, and they're semi-popular in the NCAA. You'll see a lot of them. The other main one to look out for is a Wu, which is similar to a Roth, which is a 360 Russian across the horse, but it has two Russians, so 720 degrees or more of turning, okay? And that's an E, that's an E value. I just realized when I was talking about Michael Fletcher's um, routine that I didn't talk about the valuation of the non-Russian flops. So there's another flop type that you can do, which is purely made out purely made up of loops and stockleys. And essentially, 
you know, you can't do more than two loops or Stockley's in a row. Um, so you can't go loop, loop, loop. That would not be a valid flop sequence. But you could do loop, loop, Stockley, like we saw from him. If you have three elements in your sequence, that's a D value. And if you have four elements in the sequence, that's an E value. That's about it. So in Michael Fletcher's routine, we saw him do a loop, loop, Stockley, which is a D value. Any combination. You could do Stockley, loop, loop, you know, loop, Stockley, loop, whatever you want. Um, as long as you have three of them, D value. If you have four of them, like I did, I did loop, loop, Stockley, Stockley A, that's an E value. So I should have mentioned that with the flops. Okay, all right, last last uh, element group here. We'll go we'll do go over this element group. I guess it's only been an hour, so that I I was kind of shooting for an hour and a half. So this is kind of on schedule. What we'll do is we'll go through this last element group. We'll go over a couple example videos and routines. I'll answer any questions you guys have. If you guys want to see more routines, that's fine. Um, and then we can kind of call it a day. So um, on the dismount front, there's pretty much two main dismount types that you see at high level. You see Russian dismounts and you see handstand dismounts. So Russian dismounts, very simple. They're all right here in front of us. Uh, single Russian is a B. Uh, double Russian is a C. Triple Russian is a D. There are some very complicated nuances with Russians in general that I'm going to talk about in a second, and it's going to confuse you, so that's good. Uh, and handstand dismounts. So for the most part, um, the way to think about it is kind of like what I said before, where circling up to the handstand and doing a direct stock lie or like a, a one pommel circle to the handstand Doing the one pommel circle to the handstand upgrades it by one tenth, and then adding travels upgrades it by by however many travels you're doing. So at its core, you can do a um, I think it's I think it's this one right here. No, 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 no. There's another one. Yeah, here. Okay. At its core, you can do a circle to handstand and just get off the horse, and that's a B. So notice they show the flared version, but you can do it. I mean, you can do it with circles as well. So. You're on the side, right? You're on. You're in your side loops. You go up to the handstand. You get off. That's a B. Now at now <clears throat> doing the same thing, but instead of circling the handstand, now you're doing a single pommel loop to handstand or a stockly A to handstand from that pommel. And you just you get off. You don't do any pirouettes. C value, right? You see a lot of guys end up doing this when they try to do a D value dismount, and then they don't make it across. I was the master of doing this, so. Then the, the more common thing that you see is um, is going, and I don't think they have a box. Oh, do they have a box for it? Yeah, they do have a box for it. So, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about the boxes. Essentially, you do your direct stock lie or your single pommel loop to handstand, to travel across, um, and come down. That's a D. If you travel there and back, it's an E. There's actually, you know, ways that you can you can upgrade to an E by just traveling across, but you need to add an extra like twist in your pirouette. Uh, but you don't see that so much anymore. I think CJ Maestas used to compete that, and a couple other guys. But typically, what you see is if you go down, that's a D. If you go down and back, that's a B. Uh, sorry, that's an E. What you have to be careful about is did they actually do that direct stockley or single pommel loop into the dismount? Or did they do that side circle? Because if they did the side circle, then it devalues it by one tenth. Okay. And there was a question earlier about um, about when you lose credit on a dismount. I, I'm guessing sp specifically handstand dismounts. Um, and I think there's I think it there's a nice uh, outline here. I don't know if I can find it very quickly. Yeah. So let's see. Right here, uh, this is kind of the main way. I mean, there's there's probably other ways you can you can do it, but the the primary way that you lose it is on this deduction right here on the bottom of the screen. So lowering of legs and elements to a handstand, uh, zero to fifteen is a is a one tenth deduction. Sixteen to thirty is a three tenth deduction, and then greater than forty five is a five tenth no recognition. So a lot of times what you see is these guys go into the the dismount you know, coming up and then 
you know, they'll come down uh, more than 45 degrees and they lose it on that. Uh, there's other ways you can kind of lose the dismount. Some judges are more strict on it than others. The thing is, the dismount's really supposed to be a swing to handstand, right? It's not a press handstand. It's not a strength skill. So excessive pressing can, you know, you can lose the dismount on that um, if you're not swinging up to handstand to the criteria of the judge. So the one other thing that I wanted to mention with dismounts is for triple Russian or just Russian dismounts in general, you need to reach a height of 30 degrees or it's a three-tenth deduction, okay? So let's talk about one more very important thing. I keep pushing this button. And this is, and this is how Russians are counted um, based on their initial step which I know is confusing already, but essentially there's two ways that you can kind of do a Russian. Let's skip to the end. You can step forward into the Russian, or you can step backwards into the Russian. And this will make more sense once I demonstrate, once I show you this example. So let's see if Tommy here steps forward or backwards into his Russian. <clears throat> And so see how he steps back here with that left hand? <laughs> and and this is this just confuses uh, so many people. I mean, so many people. This is probably number one most confusing palm horse rule um, of this year. So because he steps backwards with the hand, and this is very, very important. Because he steps backwards, he does what we call uh, like a like a care motion into it. I guess uh, I don't know if it's really care, but because he he comes he he does this quarter turn into it, stepping backwards. That's the way to think of it. His Russian is defined as starting in this direction, essentially you know perpendicular to the horse, right? Kind of coming off in this direction or towards towards you know the left lower left of the screen. That's where the Russian starts and that's where you need to count. So when we watch this Russian, he does a little hop action, which is completely fine. Boom, one Russian, not long ways, even though he started in the front loop. So that's one Russian. Then we keep moving forward. That's two Russians. Now, he actually can't finish the dismount yet. And it looks like he does. So it looks like this was a, unless I got lost in uh, moving the frames forward, it looks like this was actually a double Russian dismount because on the dismount, it's defined as three Russians into a Wendy flank off. And the Wendy flank off um, from here, we can see this A box over here. I know it's kind of being hidden by the chat a little bit, but it starts in this front support, like a front loop position. And it's actually a 180 degree turn um, into the flank. So, so because of that, the Russian preceding this has to end here for the flank to begin. Okay, so yeah, so like Dan confirmed, yeah, this is a double Russian. This is. It looks like, let's watch it in full speed because it looks like a triple Russian. And then I'll, I'll go through it one more time to show you that this is actually a double Russian. So when we watch this, we think, oh, okay, one, you know, two, three, that's good. But once again, because he steps backwards, oh, let's uh, playback speed. Let's watch 25%. Okay, because he steps backwards, it starts now facing long ways from the horse, or not long ways, perpendicular from the horse, this direction. Um, then we count from there. One. Two. And now, once he hits the front loop position, right here, the Russian ends, and the 
care, the, the flank off begins, right? So he's done two and a half Russians, which doesn't really matter. Um, and now this part does not count towards his Russian. It's the, it's the, it's the, the flank off. It's all about that starting front support, like Dan said in the, in the chat. So, so that's a double Russian dismount. Now, I want to find an example of someone that steps forward. Because if you step forward with that hand, instead of stepping back, you will actually, that would actually be a triple Russian. It's kind of crazy, I know. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of this rule. Um, who does, uh, I think Ian Skirky does. Even Ian Skirky, Pommel Horse. I think he steps forward. Yep, and Dan, that's what Dan said. So hopefully this was a good one. Let's, let's watch his dismount. Uh, I don't know if this is dismount. Okay. So immediately we can see that he does not initialize his Russian stepping back. He initializes it stepping forward right see the difference he steps forward with his right hand while tommy steps backwards with his left hand of course it depends on which way you're circling but they both circle the same way so because he steps forward for whatever reason essentially the russian starts here the russian starts here facing the left okay so now when we watch his russian we count from there one Two, three, the Russian is complete. It's now the 180 degree flank off, but he's completed three full Russians. He's going to get triple Russian credit. Because he starts in the front support, cross support, yeah. And he doesn't step backwards into the, uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. It's because, it's because you know, he, he starts in that front support in that, you know, facing to the left. Uh, versus stepping back, you know, starts the front support in the side, just like Dan's saying in the chat. So it's very, very confusing from a judging perspective. Really, what you know, what I think the best thing to do in reality is look for, just be very cautious to look for the step. And then once you, you see the step, count normally. But if they, if they do a step backwards, they kind of have to do one extra one. A lot of times that ends up being the, the best thing or just, Keep in mind where the front support is and count in your head out loud every time they hit it um, and ensure that you don't, you know, hit the flank off doesn't count. So this is very, very complicated. Uh, and if we look here, I just want to bring up the fact again that he needs to hit 30 degrees on this dismount. I think he does pretty good job here. Yeah, I mean, that's way better than 30 degrees. That's a three-tenth deduction, but that's more of an E-score thing. So we've gone over all of the element groups, which is great. Um, the one other thing that I'll point out is that you do need, the code does specify that you need, um, to touch all three parts of the horse. And if not, you're going to get a, uh, a three tenth neutral deduction, but, but yeah. So, okay. I think I've covered actually all the element groups, the skills, um, you know, there's no, there's not really any bonuses to talk about, uh, from the D score perspective. Let's go over a, f a couple routines. Let's just identify the skills, um, and maybe I'll actually calculate the start values too, um, just so that we, we do some practice with that. So I'm, I'm actually going to look up Winter Cup 2021 Pommel Horse, and let's just watch some of, a couple of these because you know, these are tend to be pretty exciting. I'm not going to watch Stevens at the moment. I, maybe I will, but it, he falls and it makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's look at this one. So I'll leave it in maybe half speed. Actually, let me change to my judging view where I can write on the screen. And put this full screen. Okay, so. And I'll just symbol it the way that I would do it. Any tips for learning shorthand on pommel? Um. So first of all, any uh, the code of points you know in the lower right has sort of the standard symbols for certain things. So you can always start with that. What I find is that when those start getting tedious to to use, I make my own. There's a lot of things on Pommel Horse that are just 
that I use just like letters. So if it's a Roth, I write R, right? Um, check care, I write like CK. I think the official symbol is just C. You want to keep it concise because because pommel horse happens very fast. If you have too complex of, of symbols, you're going to have a problem because you're going to get behind on symboling. And I would just work on just doing the, the D score before you add an E score because when you're comfortable with D score, it starts to become second nature. Adding E score is not super hard. Uh, so, well, it is difficult, but it's not <laughs> as hard as, you know, starting all at once. So let's just watch this routine here. Um, he starts with a reverse scissor hand. You'll notice that he came in with that leg. Um, with that leg, I'll just go back up here to show you the difference between the, the reverse versus the, the forward scissor because this is something that we talked about. So reverse is where he's bringing that back leg, that leg that was down here. He's bringing that across the plane of the horse. And I, I denote that by putting a little circle by my X. Uh, and I have X as a scissor and then a the little up arrow signaling handstand. So let's continue. He then goes into um, a forward scissor hand. So once again, another X with an up arrow. Oh, nope. I was fooled. Fooled myself. He does not. He goes into a C scissor. So this is the C, um, this is the C full scissor with travel. So I usually just write uh, scissor C. Then he comes into a back loop, and he does a Roth. Maybe I should do this even slower just to, to be able to highlight every skill. So this Roth, right? This is a back Roth. It's a perfectly acceptable uh, variant of the Roth. At least right now, it might be taken out. But essentially, he's doing this 360. There's some debate on whether this is really like a 360 Russian for the reasons that we talked about on the step back. So he does the Roth. Um, he does a front loop. And he's going into this full spindle, it looks like, which is a D value skill. Pretty common. And the Roth, once again, was a D. Now, this is where we got to watch front supports. Loop. Loop quarter turn. Stockley, but it's not done yet. There's the front support. Stockley. And wait for that front support. Stockley. If he, doesn't fi if he falls before finishing that flop sequence, he doesn't get credit for anything. So let's watch this again. Loop. Watch those front supports. Loop quarter turn. 180. Now, you know, just from seeing these routines enough, I'm guessing it's some kind of Magyar. He's up on the pommel. He's coming down to the middle. He's coming up onto the pommel. Remember, as long as pretty much anything other than pommel, pommel, gets D value. Savado, another D value element, group three. And probably dismount here. He steps onto the pommel and actually he's doing a full pommel loop there. That can be tricky. Does a full pommel loop before doing his dismount, which is coming from one pommel, a little bit of strength, and then he's going across and back. So because he did it from the one pommel, across and back, that's an E value dismount. And if you're struggling to remember how to get those values on the dismounts, think of it from, from, from the basic building block that I told you. The circle up to handstand um, and just coming off, B, val B value, right? That's the baseline, B for baseline, okay? B value. You add the, the Stockley A up or the, the one pommel up, now it's a C value. You add one travel down, D value. You add another travel back, E value. See? So you don't even have to memorize, and eventually you will memorize it, but uh, you don't even have to just to, to remember these skills. So what did he do here? He did a D scissor handstand, right? These scissor handstands are D value. He did that, um, <laughs> what I had presumed to be another D scissor hand, but he actually went into a full scissor with the one third travel down to the side. Uh, which is a C, very common. 
We did a back loop. I'm not going to label our, our A value skills, our basic skills, um, until the end, just because we only have 10 counting skills, so maybe not necessary. Uh, we can always pull from those if needed at the end. Uh, we have our Roth, D. We have a full spindle, D. Um, our loop loop, stockly stockly. Remember, four elements, a four element flop sequence is an E. Um, loop loop 180, D. Uh, and remember, once again, the 180 on the 180 Russian on a single pommel is a B value skill. But with this flop sequence, each one of these these loops upgrades it by a tenth. So B, C, D. Magyar Savato are both Ds. The single pommel loop is a B, and we have an E dismount. Let's add them up. I like to count, I like to multiply whatever we have the most of. So we have a lot of Ds. So one, two, three. Four, five, six times four is twenty-four. Actually, before we do that, let's let's make sure that he he uh, his element groups are okay, right? I guess you know I kind of did a visual scan over it, but I guess I should just do it out explicitly. So these are element groups one. The travel is element group three. Spindle stays in one place, so it's element group two. Stays in one place on the flop, it's group two. Same thing on the other flop, group two. Um, three and three here for the travels, and two for the single pommel loop, and the dismount, of course, is four. Do we have everything? One, two, three, four. We do. Do we have more than five skills in anything? No, he's good. Let's count up those Ds again. One, two, three, four, five, six times four is 24. Uh, 25, 26, 27. Now I'll go skip over to this, this B, 28, 29, and then we have two E's, which is a point 39, right? So 3.9. We have our two points of element groups. If you're getting lost here, go watch my other video on the basics of men's scoring. 5-9 start. That would be bad if I miscounted there. Um, oh, interesting, no. Is this day one? Yeah. Uh, I thought they'd put the breakdown here. On the USAG ones, they do. I did, that was apparently a flow gymnastics. So I'm pretty fairly confident in that. <laughs> um, so no need to check. Uh, but that's kind of, you know, the basic concept. Let's look at let's look at Stevens real quick here. Any questions on the on Cameron's? Let me know. Um, I'll, I'll explain it before I erase it off the screen. But I think that one was mostly straightforward. And this is another tip that I have for learning shorthand or symboling on pommel horse is because it goes so fast, it's difficult. So just pull up a video and put it in slow motion in YouTube. If you hit the the settings cog here, you can hit playback speed. We're watching at a quarter speed right now. It's as slow as you can go. Um, you know, there's no shame in that. Just go through, identify these skills as it's going, and preferably use a video that you can reference the final start score um, to, to make sure that you're doing it right, okay? So give me one second because I'm going to clear the clear my, my writing. All right, let's play. Oh, not that. And this will be an interesting one because he does fall, so I'm not sure if he'll lose credit on something. So, scissor full turn all the way across, Mikulik, that's a D value. And he's starting his circles here. He just did a, he just did a full circle, so I'm going to write circle. Loop, watch those front supports. Loop, quarter, turn, which is also a loop. One Russian done, right? Two Russians done. Remember, he started facing away from us. Watch those front supports. Three Russians done, okay? So now he's doing circles. I already wrote down a circle, so I'm not going to write down another one. And here comes that sewn. It's a fo you know, notice how he's, he's kind of going forward, right? He's not leading with his butt. Um, I actually normally don't write it. An S for sewn, I usually write a K for care. I don't know why I did that. Um, and now this is a this is a bazugo. So okay, okay. So okay, let's uh, dissect what's happening here. Um, first of all, once again, if you're having trouble with identifying sewns versus bazugos, sewn, it's leading with your hips first, right? His you know the front of his body is leading here, okay. Bazugo is the same thing on the other arm, but you're driving your heels. You're leading with your butt. Now, here's where things get a little bit uh, spicy in this routine. 
you do, they, you know, there is a clarification that you need to finish these skills to both pommels. So he does not. He comes onto the single pommel. Uh, previously, I would have actually probably given him credit on the skill before that clarification because to me, he's finished the element to front support and he's engaged another element, but he doesn't get credit because you need to come to both pommels now. So I normally write that actually as like this, um, and I would, I would cross it out. So I actually normally don't write S for sewn. Personally, I write K for care, and then I write S with a little reverse symbol on it which as like a reverse Stockley. However you want to write it, fine. You want to write B for Bazugo. That's whatever. That's how I would write it. I like to write it down because even though I know he didn't get credit, I I like to put it on there to show to remind myself later if I look back at the routine, he did this skill, but it didn't get credit for whatever reason, right? And if I, yeah. So that's a good tip as well. Always kind of just try to write down what they do. Even if it doesn't get credit, just cross it out. That way you have a log. All right, so let's see what he does. So now he completes a loop in that front support right there. Hopefully I don't run out of paper here, or imaginary paper. Loop, loop quarter turn, right? Watch those front supports, they're tricky. He's not in front support, he's not in front support, he's not in front support, boom, front support, Stockley, right? And he comes down. So that's the end of that flop sequence, loop, loop, Stockley. We'll keep that in, in mind. Now let's watch this woo. We can kind of see that the number of Russians he's doing. The Wu finishes, he finishes. He doesn't continue into Russians. That can be really tricky if they do uh, Russians out of the Wu. He's doing back loops. I wrote down a back loop right there. It's a little L with a circle for the, uh, <clears throat> indicating it's a backwards element. He does a Roth, back Roth. Put R for Roth. He's going into Magyar, leather, 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 once again. Only thing that gets a, that gets devalued to a C is pommel to pommel. So this is a D value Magyar. And uh, Savato, I'm just gonna write down because I'm fairly sure that's what he's doing. Probably into his dismount. Oh, okay, so this is a, actually a very, first of all, the backflip, awesome. The Nederostic, I wanna see that in the code. But this is a, actually a perfect example of when you lose credit on something. So. This is why, as a judge, so, so, so important to, in your head, mentally take note of every front front support position that occurs. Let's let's do that, actually, on this skill. So, he finishes the, he finishes the, uh, the Magyar here. Thanks so much for the tip, by the way. Um, he finishes the Magyar here in front support, so not yet. Boom. Finish the Magyar. Now, he's allowed to start doing the, the Sabato here. And he was on a front support there with the, with the, like this. He's working his way back. There's another front support. But what he really needs to finish this is to have both hands on that last leather part. Okay? And he never gets there. He does, he does the back blow, which is pretty cool. But he never gets there. So he actually loses um, the entire skill. You don't give partial credit on um, anymore. You used to be able to say, oh, okay, well, he gets half a Magyar, which, by the way, is a B value. But now uh, that's not the case. Same thing for flops. You know, if, you, if they're trying to do, uh, if they're they're finishing, say, say they've done loop, loop, Stockley, and they're going into the last Stockley and they fall, you don't get credit for anything in the flop. It's pretty brutal. All right, so let's watch the rest of their routine. Probably going to repeat the, the Savato to get credit for it. That's perfectly okay. Let's watch those front support positions. Front support there, probably starting the Mag the Savato. Yep, another front support. Another front support, but not yet completed. There we go, there's that front support, okay? Now he's stepping up to the pommel for the dismount, so take mental note of that. It's, it's, it's from the pommel. Comes up, he goes down, he comes back, now, here's another tricky situation, right? Our, right off the bat, our first thought is maybe E dismount because he goes there and he goes back. But what we need from the E dismount is we need him to complete this turn on the close side of the pommel horse, right? That's how it would be done properly. But instead, he comes on the wrong side. So we essentially just devalue this to uh, the previous value. 
which would be um, a D value. Okay. So let's take a look at these skills and uh, add them up, and that, that's the end of the routine. So he starts with that D McCulloch scissor. Oops, don't want that. I want I meant group one, <laughs> not D. He goes loop, loop, triple Russian. That's a G flop. Of course, you could build that up again, the same way we built up the other uh, Russian flop sequence. Group two doesn't go anywhere, right? Now we've got E for the care, group two. He does not repeat the reverse, uh, the bazugo. Um, so no credit there. Loop, loop, stockley, that's a D value, uh, group two. E, group three for the woo. D for the Roth, Magyar, and Savato, and they're all D group three. D dismount. How many skills do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need to count an A. Good thing he's got a circle, and he doesn't have too many group twos, so this should be fine. All of his elements groups look pretty good, and he doesn't have more than five of any one element group. So let's add up the skills. Uh, let's do the same thing where we multiply our Ds, because we have a lot of them. One, two, three, four. By the way, dismount's group four. One, two, three, four, five, six times four is 24. Um, 25 with the A, 30 with the E, um, 35 with the other E, and I always have to think about G, so let me just <laughs> put 35 without the G. G is uh, 7, right? Because E is 5, 6, 7. So 4, 2, 4.2, 2.0, 6.0, 7.0. Okay, let's see, let's just uh, double check. 6, 4, huh? Hmm, did I miss something here? Let's see. Let me watch this in real speed. A little curious. Four element groups, uh, one of them is the dismount. So let's see here. Maybe I, maybe I did some math wrong. Let's just make sure our skills are right. D scissor, I have that. Loop, loop, one, two, three. Care, Garcon, Bazugo, no credit. Loop, 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 Stockley. So that's a D value, just like I gave it. E woo. Roth, uh, D value. Magyar, D value. Savato, no credit. We saw the repeat, and we know that the other one was a D. So let me just make sure I did my math right. I mean, I'm, this is interesting because it looks like I'm not lining up with them. One, two, three, four, five. Six times four is 24. 25, 35 plus the G, which is seven, right? Yeah, seven. Six, two. All right. Well, uh, I think they, uh, think they might have um, had a small error here. Uh, which happens. I mean, this is a, honestly this is a tough routine to uh, to to judge in person, but and, and mistakes do happen. I'm pretty confident about the six two start, so it's kind of interesting. They maybe gave. I'm guessing. I'm, I'm just trying to. One, I'm just trying to figure out how they got to this number. Um, I'm guessing they possibly gave the the flop an E, and then maybe. Okay, so maybe they give the flop an E, and then maybe they give the dismount an E. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to think too much about it. Uh, pretty confident with what we've got here. So I think this is giving you guys a pretty good idea. Just so, I mean, I have no problem going through. Um, I have no problem going through 270 Kier. Oh, oh, oh. On the, on the Bazugo? Or you, you mean a 270 Stockley? Yeah. Maybe that's what they did. They gave a C. I don't know if you... I guess you could do that. I'm not sure if the... Hmm. So I think what Dan's saying is that they gave that uh, C value, 270 Stockley. Let's find it. Reverse Stockley with 270 to one pommel. I think this is it. Interesting. But is this what he did? 
reverse Stockley all the way. But this is like facing out, right? <laughs> huh. Reverse Stockley 270 turn. Did he do? This is kind of interesting. Yeah, okay. Maybe maybe he can get that. Yeah, okay. I guess that, yeah, that's right. So gets a C value there. Uh, didn't really think too much about that. Good catch, good catch. Cool, okay. Um, so if, uh, so hopefully this has been useful for people. Um, if you guys want me to do one more routine, let me know, uh, and I have no problem doing that. Uh, if you have something specific you want me to look at, um, I have no problem doing that. But I hope that this has been a pretty good general uh, overview of Pommel Horse D score, going over some of the the key uh, key skills that you see in the routines, getting a good sense of what the four element groups are, and how you kind of break down these routines when you're watching them, and separate skills out to identify them. Um, yeah, so if there, I'll leave this open for a couple more minutes. If there's any uh, <laughs> classic routine from Zoltan, Margaret. Yeah, sure. Uh, if there's any other questions that you guys have, let me know. But let's try to find one of these old Zoltan Magyar, one of these old routines. Because these are very interesting. <laughs> yeah, let's do... Event finals. Here we go. First place, 1976 Olympics. Let's check it out. I think we're still watching at super slow speed. Nope, this is normal. <clears throat> Video is quite short, so probably a quite a short routine. Loop, loop. There's that uh, that full spindle D value, and it is named after him. So there it is. The video is not great quality. There's the Magyar. Um, looks like he's doing a couple care and Stockley elements, maybe racking up a couple Bs there. Uh, see the Stockley B up into the middle. A few basic scissors. These are all A value. I don't. I have no. By the way, I have no idea what the rules were at you know at the time of of this routine. <laughs> no idea. He did do a single pommel loop there. B value. Looks like he did another one. Side travel down, which is an A value. And uh, I didn't watch too closely whether he stepped forward or backwards on that Russian. Maybe we'll take a look at that again. It's a little hard to see in in uh, 110p here. <laughs> yeah, so not even a full Russian there. Um, yep, you can definitely see how times have changed with gymnastics. It's pretty incredible, some of the stuff that we're seeing uh, at all levels now. So... Any other questions about Pommel Horse that you'd like me to address now? Uh, if not, of course, feel free to uh, shoot me a message on social media, and I'd love to help you out. But I hope this has been infor informative for you guys. Um, feel Definitely come check out the, uh, the Winter Cup recap I'm doing on Wednesday evening. And so thanks for tuning in, guys, and have a good evening. I'll, I'll see you guys on the next one.